least growing up. So I went to college, and when I was a, and I always was involved in school plays and, and theater and throughout, you know, middle school and high school. And then when I was in college, uh, I was coming up on graduation, and I was thinking, all my friends had plans, they all knew what they were gonna do, and I had no clue. And I had a friend who lived in Los Angeles uh, from college, and I went home with her one summer, and we were, her dad worked uh, at television, at um, CBS Radford, so we were extras on a bunch of sitcoms, and that was my first time ever being on a set, and I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, this is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, I didn't have much formal training, so I moved to Los Angeles. I started studying with a, a coach in LA, and, um, and I thought, you know, I'm 22 years old, I've, I've, if, I, if this doesn't work out, then that's okay. I didn't have any, what we were just talking about, I had no real responsibilities in my life. So I was like, I'll give it the old college try and, and we'll see where it goes. So um, little by little, you know, you start laying the groundwork and, and you get like a, a, a big break or even just like a non-tangible break where you get uh, an agent or a manager or something that doesn't put food on the table, but it gets you one step closer to the goal. Um, and then I went through a period of like two years where, by the way, this is the late, you know, this is like uh, the early 2000s, with every television show on TV was filled with a bunch of white teenagers, or white, like, 20-year-olds. So there was one year that I had like 500 auditions, mm -hmm. and I did not book one job. But, um, but you know, as time was going on, I was getting called back more for producer sessions and uh, getting to the point where it was between me and one other guy, and inevitably, like, the other guy always got it, but it still felt like I'm moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, so then, and, I, and during this whole time, I was painting houses and waiting tables and doing all the things that actors do. Yeah. Uh, so, so it didn't fall into my lap, because I, I was really, like, I was hustling, I was auditioning a lot, and and spending all the money I was making at the restaurant I was working on rent and acting class, that was it. And, um, and then I started getting like small jobs, like you know, one or two lines on Gilmore Girls or some other shows. And then um, I guess the job that I considered to be my break was uh, I did the last season on Dawson's Creek. And that was, the, that was the job where once I got that job, I was able to stop waiting tables. Um, and that was great, because I paid the bills for like seven or eight months, and then it ended, and I was like, well, now what? Um, and I was like, do I have to go out of the closet and get that apron again and go back to the restaurant? And then uh, Line R came along, and it was supposed to be a two or three week summer gig. And um, and so I was like, well, I'll do this so for a few months, why, or a few weeks, why not? And then after my audition, they said, oh, we really liked what he did. Would he be willing to stick around for for three months, and I was like, yeah, why not? And then after my first week, I had drank the Kool-Aid, and I was like, I will be here as long as they'll have me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think it was right around this time that... Uh, was it before you won the Emmy, or was that? That's before. But it was also, we had a head writer at the time named Kay Alden, who um, was convinced that the character of Kevin was not redeemable, and um, that he had done too many bad things. He, you know, burned the stripper, and everything with Lily and burning down the restaurant. So she kept saying, we can't so, redeem this did guy. You walk, uh, did you walk somebody in the freezer? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, attempted murder too, forgot about that. Um, so she was like, we can't redeem this guy. And uh, and then somewhere around this time when they were doing all this, I think she was like, oh, there's maybe there is a there there. And, uh, and, and here we are, 17 years later. Wow, yeah. amazing. It's crazy. crazy. So I mean, a lot of a lot of actors, I mean, who have started in daytime, um, basically have tried to cross over into the prime time thing. And necessarily, a lot of actors it hasn't worked out. What has stopped you from crossing over and leaving daytime and staying more into the prime time? Well, I think uh, I think if it had come easier to me, and by the way, the the. The period of time from when I landed in Los Angeles to when I started working was about four years, which I know in the grand scheme of things is not is, is not a long time at all. Mm -hmm. But in the day to day, when you're in it, it feels like an eternity. When you know you're working 
70 hours a week at a restaurant. It's, it's uh, you know, a, a, a year feels like a long time. So I think the fact that it didn't come as quickly or as easily as I wanted it to, mm -hmm. once I had it, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to let this go. They'll have to drag me out of this boat, which they did. Um, <laughs> uh, but so uh, unlike some other people that, that maybe fall into it a little easier, mm -hmm. in my experience, they tend to be the ones who get the itch to, 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 to try other things because they, they haven't struggled. And I think you kind of need to struggle sure. at some point. I always say without, without struggle, there is no progress. For sure. No progress yeah. no success. And that is 100% true. So. So you, you, you have crossed over as well from the other lessons from Days of Our Lives. You play a character named Neil Stark from mm -hmm. Days of Our Lives. Yeah. What do you find the differences between Kevin Fisher and Leo Stark? Uh, well, Leo's gay. <laughs> so there's, uh, I'll pull up a clip actually from.